Hi, Bruce the Accounting Guy once again. And today what we're going to be working on is bank reconciliations. Something that every single one of you really should be doing for yourself, even personally. The purpose of a bank rec is really twofold. One reason most of my students tell me they do a bank rec is to find the errors they made in their checkbook. And that's really true. That is one reason why you personally would want to do. But the other big reason why you really want to do a bank reconciliation is not to find errors that you made, but did you know that banks also can make errors? I bet you just can't believe that. And I'm sure you've found that banks have made errors in your lifetime. And the other thing is, is remember, who's working at a bank? People just like you and me. So it's important to do a bank rec from the perspective of finding the errors you made, but also finding the errors that the bank made. I have found many errors that the banks have made over the years. I had to let my clients know, and then they've notified the bank. Okay, we had one where we had I had a client that had a deposit of over thirty-five thousand that was put into his account incorrectly. However, by the time my client notified the bank, because he really didn't want to initially, I told him it really doesn't matter. I wouldn't be surprised if it was gone anyway, because the account that it was not put in, of course, they had an accountant or somebody who was reconciling that account, and they found that that money was not put in there, and they notified the bank, and the bank had to go back and look at it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a bank reconciliation. We're going to do what's called a, a double-sided bank reconciliation. And again, for most of you, you're going to always want to do at least the first side. Side. When we have a business, we really need to do both sides, as we'll see. So let's take a look. You have this information in your book. When, when, you, have, when you do a bank reconciliation, all this information that is here is going to be supplied to you. And what we're going to do is, is we'll go ahead and we'll use it one step by step and discuss what it is. Okay, now the part of the bank reconciliation that you should really at least do, even for yourself personally, is this left-hand side here for for, for Laird, what we want to do is, is we want to start off with what's called the cash balance per the bank statement. Of course, that's a very easy number to get a hold of because of the fact we'll get the bank statement from our bank and that's the first number that we'll write down. And there'll be two adjustments that we'll deal with on this bank rec and that you should be dealing with at home. Now again, this bank rec is also assuming that the bank has not made any errors. So let me make that clear. And everything that you're going to do, the bank will not make an error also. Um, the first thing that we'll do is all we're going to do really with the bank rec is start off with the cash balance per the bank statement. And then we're going to do two things. We're going to add one number and subtract one number. And that's all there really is to it. The first number we'll add what's, is what's called a deposit in transit. And here it is, 2,201.40. It will always be giving to you and all the information. Now, I know I have these check marks next here, so it reminds me of what to go over, and I don't miss a number. But as I use these numbers in the information supplied, I'm going to check them off to know that I've used them all. And then by the time I've used them all, hopefully all of this will, will be complete. So I've already started off with the bank statement balance of 15907. So I'll go ahead and I'll check that number off. I'm, I'm finished with that number. And then the next thing I want is I always want to remember, again, when you set these up, just go add deposit and transit. Now, what is a deposit and transit? Here it is. So I'm going to use that number, and here I've put it down, and I add the two amount. Now, a deposit and transit is a deposit that you have written in your checkbook but the bank is not showing it, and generally it occurs at the, at the very last day of the month. You know, you drive up to the bank, they have that little window that says all deposits made after 2 p.m. will be recorded the very next banking day. So if you roll in to the bank on April 30th, which is what we're doing the bank rec here for, then, and you roll in after two, you're going to make a deposit. You put that deposit in your checkbook. But when you get the bank statement, it won't be on there because they're not going to record it until the next month, which is May 1st. So again, that, we have to add those deposits in transit. Then we just come up with a subtotal. Then after we take the balance per bank, add the deposit in transit, the next thing we do is we subtract out the outstanding checks. Now that's just something that will be given to you. That total was given right here. Here's our outstanding checks. Generally in all the work that you're going to do, they'll either list them out and you have to total them, or they'll just give you a total that says outstanding checks 5,904, which is what they really have here. They listed them out here, but we didn't need to. We could have just put the total and go subtract. 
Now, what is an outstanding check? It's a check that you've written in your checkbook, and when you get your bank statement as of April 30th, it's not on there because the person you wrote the check to has not taken it to the bank and cashed it. You know, it's the check you buy, you know, when you've ever bought Girl Scout cookies and you buy those Girl Scout cookies and you pay for them by check. A lot of times it takes them forever to get that in there. And when you get your bank statement, you see they're not on there. So again, that isn't a deposit. In, I mean, that is an outstanding check. So again, once we've done that, we subtract it from our subtotal. And that really is the adjusted cash balance per the bank. That's what your checkbook really should equal. Now, again, really, it's a real quick procedure then for the bank side of it. You take your balance per the bank. You just need to add your deposit and transit and subtract your outstanding checks. And I say do the left side first because of the fact it's easier. It's just three numbers working together. Balance per bank plus deposits in transit, minus the outstanding checks. Okay, so that would be our total right there, and that's what we're trying to prove, that 12,204.85. Now, when we do the right side, and some, if you look in your book, either they'll put this to the right or they'll take this and put it underneath, okay, it will still come up with 12,204.85, as you can see, but what we're really going to do is find out what adjustments we have to make to our checkbook that will have our checkbook equal to 12,204.85. Why are they unequal? So let me slide on over here and let's go over on this side now. Now what we need to do then is first find the balance per our checkbook, which is the cash balance per books or checkbook, 11,589.45. That will also be given to you in all the information in any problem. And here it is up here. Here's the 11,589.45. So I'll check that number off also because that's my starting point. Now, there is quite a difference between the 11,589.45 and the 12,204.85, and what this does is reconciles it, shows how it moves from this dollar amount to that. There are numbers that will increase it, and there will numbers that will decrease it. Now, as you read your book, the reason that we also want to do this right side or the bottom part if it's brought over to here is because of the fact is, is it gives us, if you look farther in your book, the necessary journal entries we need to make to move it from this dollar amount to that because we need to get our account to the 12,204.85, I mean, in our, in our uh, general ledger. I'm not going to hold you responsible for the journal entries, but I do want you to understand that's really another reason why we're doing this reconciliation. It tells us what we have to debit and credit. Now, the information will always give it us. Let's talk about the ads, um, the numbers we're going to add. So, again, all we're going to do is take this cash balance and either add numbers to it or subtract it, just like we did on the other side. We added and subtracted. Now we're going to add and subtract. One number that you're always going to find, at least in an accounting class, is, is you're going to find a note receivable collection. For some reason, the textbooks and everyone likes to give you, okay, what they want to do is, is they want to tell you that on behalf of this company, the bank is collecting a note that somebody owes them money for. And so in this example, if we take a look at, um, let's see where we have it right here under the bank memorandum, we will find a, this information that says credit, collection of note receivable for $1,000, plus interest earned of 50, less the bank note collection of 15. So what that means is, is that they did collect what? $1,035. Now I'm going to use that number, so I'm going to put a check mark next to it. And again, the bank collected a note of 1,000, plus it had interest of 50, so there was 1,050, but before the bank put the money in, they took out their collection fee of 15, so they put in 1,035. So what we would do under the word add, and notice they have the word add, and they put collection of note receivable, and they wrote out what it was, but they only show it as 1,035. Notice that it, it was not brought over right underneath because we have another other numbers we're going to add or possibly subtract, and therefore we, we come over one column to the left, and we are going to total them out, and then we'll take their, their total and bring it over into this column. So we don't have all these numbers hanging out over here. This is the, the total. This is the detail of that total. And notice every column begins with a dollar sign. If we have a new column, we start with that dollar sign. So our first number is 1,035. We'll always have note collections. Um, another thing that we could possibly have would be a check error. Now it says here, error and recording check no, number 443. It could be an add. It could be a subtraction. 
It depends on which way it goes. So let's take a look at that. Here's the error up over here. It said, Laird wrote check number 443 for $1,226. So that's what the check was written for. That's what the check cleared for in the bank statement side. And the bank correctly paid that amount. However, Laird recorded the check as 1,262. So in their checkbook, they took out 1,262, but the check was only for 1,226. If we look at the difference over here, here's what Laird recorded the check for, the 1,262, but it really only cleared for 1,226. If we take that difference, it's 36. We see that Laird took out $36 too much because they wrote the ch they said in their checkbook here's how much it was but that's what it really was. So since they wrote it out for two months we take the $36 and we add it back. Now had it been reversed and Laird had actually had the check clear for this amount but they only put it in their checkbook for this amount then they would have recorded $36 too little and they would have had to subtract it out. So when we have a check error, you've got to think about which way did the money really supposed to flow. We're done with this one. We'll take this $36 and we'll add it back. Okay, now we don't go ahead and total up these numbers yet. What we want to do is finish using all the numbers we haven't checked off and see where they go. And then we'll bring the, sub, bring the you know, total amount and put them out. The next item we have that typically would show that we haven't used now is this check thing here called an NSF check from J.R. Barron for $425.60. What is NSF? NSF means non-sufficient funds. That means that when we have non-sufficient funds, that means that the check bounced on us, that the person wrote us out a check and they didn't have enough money in there. Now I had a client we used to joke about he bounced checks all the time and we always said that 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 he bounced when he walked. Okay? And he would just go right, right around the town and he was he, everybody said he was a bubbly guy but we said they just don't know the real story on this guy. He just bounced everything. So again when we have a bounce check what that means is is this that we recorded it as a deposit but now the bank has taken it out. So we'll take that $425.60 and we'll just write less NFS check of $425.60 there. And then the only thing we haven't really used less yet is the charge for printing company checks, $30. Okay, again, we wouldn't know what the charge was until the bank statement got to us. So we have that charge there for $30. We need to take it out and here it is, what's called a bank service charge. Now notice, this is what most of my clients call it. They don't write down bank service charges. They call them BS charges, but I'll leave that to your imagination. So, again, we do have that bank service charge, and that is $30. You know, also any other kind of fee, if a bank has a monthly service charge that they charge you, you don't know what it is till you get it there, and any kind of bank service charge would be what? A less, an item you would be subtracting. So we would just go down all of these and make sure we've used them all. Once we've done the left side, we come over to the right, and we know that everything we have left is either going to be an add or it's going to be a, a less. And once we're done with them all, we can stand back and total them out. I take my two adds. There they are. I take my two subtracts and total them. There they are. I take my balance per my checkbook. I add this number, come up with a subtotal. I subtract my, my, my lesses. And I should have the same number right over there as long as I've done it correctly. That is a double-sided bank reconciliation. You will need to understand that. I will be sending you an additional practice problem besides your homework. If you have any questions on that, again, please get in contact with me if you have a question on the double-sided bank rec because you will have to know how to do it. And that today wraps up yet another exciting lesson from Bruce the Accounting Guy.